Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Man, it's almost like we've never done this before. Can we get this lady some booze? We definitely have not done this 500 times. 590 times, I, I, I feel like. Because we've had about 60 deleted shows, and then some that we just haven't recorded. Uh, like haven't. right now. <laughs> we've got Christmas Abbott on the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> have you met her? She's great. She's this, great. Will live in my, this will live in my heart. <laughs> and Forever. nowhere else. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, it's, uh, it's like I've been here before. Yeah. Have you? Are you getting much sleep? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of days are like just a repetitive same thing over and over. Yeah. 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 It almost feels like that. Every day feels like Groundhog's Day for us. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we have technical difficulties. Sometimes things go well. Not very often, though. <laughs> Not very often. Those are the good days. Those are the good days. Yeah. It was other good days. Why do you think it's called, well, like, how did that Groundhog's Day start? What kind of fucked up science is that where you, like, instead of meteorology and weather and shit like that, you're just like, hey, is that Groundhog out? Yeah. Hey, yeah? is that Groundhog <laughs> out yet? Is he? Guess it's going to suck this year. Yeah, it's definitely going to suck this year. <laughs> like, what the hell? You're I one of our favorite people of all time. We, we did a show with you uh, about a year ago, year and a half ago, I feel like. It was, it was April a little, yeah, a little bit of a year and a half ago. Yeah. And we were trying to get you to go on a date with Jared. Jared had asked you out. Jared never. No, asked he didn't me ask out. her out. He, he asked her to go to, to fucking Hawaii or yeah, something. Yeah, to this day, he still has not asked me on a date or asked me out. It he just goes on these, you know, social media um, campaigns and talks about if he were to take me out and then just ask me to a vacation. That's not asking me out. Well, so <laughs> here's what. Here's why I bring this up. <laughs> we actually went on a vacation. It was called Drinking Bros Cruise. Here's the hilarious thing. I wasn't invited. Because he brought a complete fucking stranger. <laughs> Dead serious. So, like, if you think that, oh, man, that was a weird thing of Jared to do, it actually isn't. Oh, no, I called him on it. Yeah. And he, he brought it. So, on the cruise, he, he brought a real fucking stranger with him. Yeah. And she was blackout drunk half the time. He was blackout drunk the other time. We never saw the two of them in the same place at the same time. Dave, so, so far as I know, they could be the same person. Yeah. It's like oh. Batman and Bruce Wayne kind of, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know if he's dressed in drag? Um, he pulls some really hot girls. I'm not sure if he can make that transition and adjust as <laughs> that easily. It's crazy, right? Like, how is he pulling that hot of, of girls? Like, I don't he's understand it. He's a big it. personality. He's charming when he wants to be charming, but it's, it's uh, like a bulldoze. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's it's, a big bulldozer. And, it's and called it's being a sociopath. Big red the way. flags <laughs> flying left and right. I yeah. mean, he's like a marching parade of red hey, flags. Hey, why did she get a paper straw and I got this? Uh, uh, yeah, why, why did Christmas, Christmas get a paper straw? straw? You profiled that? me as a turtle murderer. Yeah. He's, Dan's not a turtle murderer. He's murdered a lot of people, but never a turtle. I've never seen him put a, hold a handgun to a turtle's head. Well, Save I would. Save the turtle. I murder would. people. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good shirt. We'll start a new t-shirt company today. Hashtag Christmas Abbott. Uh, yeah. Hashtag Christmas Abbott. <laughs> hashtag Christmas Saves Turtles. No, I mean, trademark Christmas Abbott. Sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Are you, yeah. Did you trademark your name? I think so. I did trademarked you? a couple things. Well, Fuck. I mean, whatever. I've thought about it. What's the process for that? You go to your lawyer and say, I want this done. And they're like, but how long does it take? <laughs> I think it takes a long time, right? It does, because they have to make sure that nothing else is in process. It's kind of like a patent. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. Patent, but it's, yeah. It's, is it like a one or two year process? I don't remember. You just say, hey, I'm going to pay you to do some shit. You do some shit, and I'm Christmas Abbott. I mean, I've kind of been, been in business for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I get it. A little bit. I get it. I've been trying but to trade. But I could be lying to you. I don't remember. Anything before Loyal, like, I was like, it's a blur. And, Lo and Loyal's your son. How old is he? He just turned 13 months, so he's one year. Like, let's be, let's. How many weeks? I is was that? gonna ask. Yeah, how you're many going in weeks. Time yeah. can you go? Like two years is where the weeks. He's 72 weeks operate. right now. Once we hit into like four or five months, you can drop the weeks. Okay. You know, and then hey, baby. <laughs> after one, after my my child turned one, both of them, it's just like hey, he's one. He's so one. So if people ask, I'm like, eh. He's close to a year and a half. Like, I don't go by months or days yeah. anymore. Well, um, I, I haven't had any last that long, so. Uh. <laughs> no, Dan definitely hasn't. Um, God, he's terrible. If, if, if there's a that flight of stairs hard. that Dan has never met, um, <laughs> yep. Welcome to Drinking Bros Christmas. You knew it was going there. You can't arrest gravity, I'll say that. 
<laughs> you can't arrest gravity. That's a T-shirt in the making just with a flight of stairs yeah. going down so it. so many today. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> Luckily, he's not old enough to understand this because if he was, he would say, Mom, what the fuck are you doing here? I think that he's going to ask that a lot as he gets older. Probably, right? For sure. Are you going to tell him all the stories? Yeah. All of the stories? I mean, you know, they may be... Um, Distilled. <laughs> 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 and distill, right? Yeah, they might be a, instilled, distilled plug, stories, yeah. but yeah. I, you know, I mean, I don't want to filter anything. I think that as it's age appropriate, mm -hmm. right? I can't tell him certain things when he's five and then he goes to school and he's like, guess what my mama did? And you're yeah. like, well, they can Google it. Is that how he's going to talk? No, maybe. Because you are from the South, so it's. Yeah, but you don't have, you a, know, you don't have a strong Southern accent. No. I think he's going to be such, like, so articulate and just not like I was as a child. <laughs> Which is what? What did you sound like as a yeah, child? Yeah, were you do super, yeah, were you do super an, redneck? Do an impression of yourself as a child. I don't, I wasn't super red. I just didn't really talk much. I was the girl that would, um, I could hang out with everybody. I wore my Easter dresses until I didn't fit in them anymore. And then I would go build forts and play by myself. Much like my adulthood <laughs> mm, yeah so it it transitioned okay for me okay yeah okay yeah i remember as a kid because i'm i'm from georgia so i grew up and i said to my mom i'm fixing to go play with my friends and she was like whoa 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 <laughs> you're not fixing to do anything you're fixing to lose that southern accent and i was like really and then she told you to go get a switch well exactly but here, <laughs> but here was the thing she goes look when you're older you're not going to want that southern accent it's going to be too much when you go to other parts of the world they were from the north right she was absolutely right. Like, when I went to New York City, I would have been like a fucking salsa commercial. Oh, yeah. New York City? Hell, man. Um, so I lost Wait, it. Wait, was there really salsa that was made in New York? Yeah. I'm By sure. whom? I'm sure. Why? I'm sure. Come on. Bobby Go, Flay, maybe? They do a lot of things up in New York. Why couldn't they make salsa? Because tomatoes don't grow there. Uh, they do. They grow on the rooftops in Brooklyn right now. Have you that's seen just, those farms and table that's things? That's hipster nonsense, though. That's well, not real. Welcome to the new world, Dan. <laughs> it's yeah, fucking we're hipster about nonsense the, everywhere. Those goddamn Pace commercials were in the 1980s, bitch. Yeah. And uh, they've only since improved technology. Now they're growing <laughs> tomatoes on roofs in Brooklyn, and it's all white people, and it's fucking braids, and it's, it's bird scooters, it's bracelets, a lot of puka shell. Puka shell is back. Is it? Really? Yeah. Ooh, a lot man. of puka shell. Yeah. Not into that. When? Uh, Hipsters. So we were in Austin. We saw uh, some of those motherfuckers riding down the street in front oh, of us. Yeah. You lost all of the shit inside of your body on I a rant that was one of the most epic things of all time. Not if it literally, aired, right? Well, I, I had a visual of literal you just like on a scooter pooping your pants. No, I wasn't on a scooter. I was <laughs> wanting to murder. It, yeah, we were in a scooters. rental car, and I said, if you have to evacuate, do it in a rental car. Yeah. yeah. Like I paid for the insurance. So if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna evacuate all your bowels, do it in a fucking rental car. You know, because that's 25 bucks that I'm fine to get away with. Uh, you turn that back with three <laughs> pounds of shit in the passenger seat. To be honest, say, hey, I did that. Well, actually, Loyal did that in my car and on a train. No way. Oh, in, for sure. In the seat, no diaper. Uh, well, there was a whole situation on the train. He decided to poop twice, blow out, blow out. And at, at one point, I'm on the floor, my own jacket underneath him because I don't want to take him to the bathroom. And people are looking <laughs> over and I'm like, dare to say something to me. Yeah. yeah. Don't you tell me how to raise my child. <laughs> yeah. I will well, if you're going to look, help. <laughs> yeah. Take this diaper, dirty yeah. diaper, throw it away. Don't I just stare and gawk and just be like, mm, and put your little judgment pants on. Take your judgment pants off and help. Are there judgment pants? Oh, yeah, for sure. I brought mine today. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> look, Dan's, if you're going to judge anybody, Dan's the one to be judged. I am. I wear uh, sandals with jeans sometimes. Yeah. So I should be judged. That's a true story. But it's by because the way. I'm lazy and don't give a shit. Yeah. And you want to murder turtles. No, I don't want to. I just, I like to. So yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's a hobby. Yeah. Okay. So what, what, how nice was the jacket that your child shit in? Like, were we talking, <laughs> was it like a Gucci? Or was it, you know? No, but it didn't matter because, I mean, you just throw the whole outfit away. And it's gone. It's gone. Did you, th you throw it out the train window? <laughs> no, because I wanted everybody else on that train to suffer. And I, I <laughs> <laughs> so you just left a jacket full of Spiteful shit mother. on the train and <laughs> I mean, said, deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> wow. I'm into that. I mean, I put it in the trash bin. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it doesn't contain all the smell. No, it doesn't. Uh, why take a train, by the way? I'm always curious the people who ride trains. Driving with the six month is uh, not a good idea. When it's five hours fr from Got it. Raleigh to D.C., no, so I get it. from that, it, it was just like... They also have Wi-Fi on the fucking trains, too, which is in, pretty dope. If, in case you have 
your lap or arms to be able to watch things. You, you can carry it. You can hold a phone in a child. I see people in LA doing it all the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, they also have assistants. They're, they're holding <laughs> the, the child by the leg <laughs> yeah. like this, and yeah. they have the phone in the other hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> assistants, nannies, the whole shit. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand it. You know, Do you have a nanny? Uh-uh. Nothing. Uh, he's in daycare. Uh, he usually goes from like 10 to 2. Three-ish. Okay, that's not bad. He's really good, by the way. He's just mm-hmm. he's just chilling over there. He's a chill baby. He had a three-hour nap too this morning. <laughs> that's so crazy, that's part of it. man. He's yeah, he's a good baby. He's yeah, a yeah, good baby. yeah. He's I don't Why aren't there service dogs that could just babysit your fucking kid yet? I feel mm. like that's the next thing, right? Well, well they're I they're gonna have those robot dogs. Have you seen those Boston Dynamic dogs? No. Yeah, looks like uh, Black Mirror. So I I, I have a and feeling those things are babysit be. children. Yep. I have a feeling one day that's what it's going to be of like, hey, put your baby with a robot and then you can come back whenever you want. Oh, yeah. 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 Because babies don't need a human interaction at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, think about it. They're playing with toys every day. They're, they're, it's, it's almost like they're playing with robots. Would you ever leave your kid with a robot? I, I don't think so. For like an hour. No. Just one hour. Like, uh, uh, just like maybe 45 minutes with a robot just to see what happens. No, I don't think so. No. I, th- I think the kid would be fine. I mean, the chances are that he would be fine, but also chances are that if something happened, that robot would not understand the emergency that is happening. Yeah, you hook, up, you hook up a biometric feedback system to the child. <laughs> right? I've got this all figured out. I'm, I'm saying you should probably just give it a go. <laughs> just give it a go one time. Put, leave your baby with a robot. I will, too. You know what they should do? They should just make a baby Bjorn that has uh, Velcro on the back of it. <laughs> and you have Velcro on your wall. You just stick that fucker to the wall and leave. Yeah. Because he's pl- not going to go anywhere. He's That's not going to choke on his own vomit with his head upright like that. He'll no, be he'll be he's fine. He's not going to fall. That's Nothing not considered bad will child happen. abuse or neglect at all. <laughs> I don't Wait, think so. Not at all. There's no law that says you can't leave your kid alone in your house in a dog crate for three days. Oof, Dan. There's no law that specifically I, says you well, can't do that thing. Dan is not a father, ladies and gentlemen. It does not line it out, but that is falling under the umbrella of neglect and child uh, abuse. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe it's that. no I big deal. I didn't see my parents until I was eight years old. Really? Of course not. Uh, Dan, it seems like you had a really fucked up child. I could see you left in a closet or like I a baby a, Jessica. I had a fucked left up childhood, well. but it was more like uh, Kevin Costner style. Wolves were there. It's fine. Oh, okay. Because wolves, they're pack animals. They teach you how to fucking like conflict resolution, all that stuff. You learn yeah. everything you need to know from wolves. That was the point of that movie, I think. Oh, yeah. Dances with wolves? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, that was one of the movies that Kevin Costner got his dick cut out of. Um, did you know this story? They showed his. They no, he's it? he's in tried there? to get his dick into nine movies now. It, so it's been eight. So he's eight had his movies, penis yeah. cut out of eight movies. So he's what I tried need to, to put know, his penises. Which one was successful? None. None. So none. I can't see it. No, you can't see <laughs> it yet. <laughs> but here's the thing: if you met him, he would definitely show you. I feel like he would. Yeah. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Like, hey, I heard this story <laughs> about you trying to show everybody your dick. Just let me see it, bro. Yeah, he, he showed a masseuse in, uh, what was it, London? Where he was like, Something, so we're yeah. doing the flip over, right? It was like a Four Seasons, and they were like, whoa, we're a Four Seasons, man. Like, he's like, I'm Kevin Costner. Yeah, I'm Kevin fucking Costner, bro. <laughs> well, now that Yellowstone is getting so much success at this point in his life, in 2019, it's a great show. It's, it's probably the best show on TV right Seriously, now. Seriously, it was, it was Have you still not watched it yet? No, I still haven't watched it yet. Uh, Jesse, how old bastard. is Costner? Because he's up in Ohio all the time. How, how old is Costner? 65, Doesn't probably. Matter. So sexy. Yeah. She's in, she, my wife's into daddies as well. Older men like that. I'm actually not into daddies. It's Kevin Costner, and I'm like, I need to move to Montana. Oh, yeah. He's got a <laughs> I've fucking heard that. hammer I've actually on heard too. a lot of people say because of that movie, they're looking at land in Montana now. Of I'm course. Like, Just relax. Yeah. Uh, I think have you, you been to Montana in the winter? Yeah. It's dope. Well, it's, it's beautiful, yeah. but it's, it's, it's excruciatingly cold. And 19 I have feet of like snow. It's like a temperature tolerance of a chihuahua, so anything below 70 degrees, I just start convulsing from shivering. Yeah. How it's long have you lived good. in North Carolina? 11 years. Holy shit. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. I moved hey. after you. I don't know why I'm welcoming you here. Because <laughs> um, you're in the Carolinas, and that's I f- what you I do. feel like it. It's like, I'm like, how you doing? Sweet tea? Yeah. So, hey, well, welcome. Your mama's suggestion didn't uh, stick. It, it stuck for a little bit, you know, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll flip flop in and out of it. Yeah. You need a like a direct if you're going southern accent, you need one right down the middle, kind of like McConaughey, where it's just an easy one right mm-hmm. down the middle. It can't be too hard like a like a Larry the Cable guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, or a Dr. Twangy. Phil. Uh, yeah. So there's like there's two different. There, well, there's tons of different um, like 
twangs, right? So my family, we had the country twang, and then we had the mountain twang. The country twang was real slow, and like you're going to go deer hunting. That's Georgia. It's like molasses coming yeah, out of Yeah, real mouth. slow, yeah, and yeah. You, you drink some tea, and you go watch your neighbors. Yeah. And then the, the mountain twang was real hard and fast, like, y'all don't go, go get it to mountain orchard. It's, it's, boom, like, oh, it's yeah. Boomhauer. That's yeah. that one. Boomhauer boom like, from King of the Hill. You can't yeah, you're catching every other here. word. Yeah. Give me a quarter yeah. like, one for the rope. <laughs> <laughs> you're like. So which one did you sound like as a child? Because, again, we, you have a, you, I feel like you're dodging that question. I, was, I actually didn't pick up a super southern accent, and I think it's because my older sister mm. had one, and she was real thick with it, and I, I was just always kind of mesmerized at she wanted to wear her camos during the Christmas pictures. Yeah. She, like, she was in it. Real southern. And I was like, uh-uh. And I was always kind of the the more city girls, like not like kind of alternative, weird. And my parents told me I was weird from day one, so I was like, okay. It's whatever. a good thing to tell your children, I think. It is. So yeah. So I made sure it didn't stick. Yeah, Walmart Southern is what you're. I think you're referring to. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because Atlanta, you know, where I'm from, is is more or less like. Uh, That's a I, proper Southern. I'm life. not gay. I'm just from Atlanta. <laughs> like it's that. It's yeah. very. It's very polite. It's all the dudes talk like. I'm mm-hmm. not gay. I'm just from Atlanta. That's uh, southern, like Southern proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southern proper. <laughs> southern proper. Um, how how was it getting back into CrossFit? By the way, after having a child. <laughs> not gonna happen, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> Um, I think I think I just recently kind of got in a groove of working out and just like really kind of finding my own my own balance. I mean, it took I love you, baby, but it took a, a lot out of me. I bet. And the, by the way, the reason I asked this, I watched the Serena Williams doc on mm-hmm. HBO and she had a child and tried to go back to becoming it, too soon. Yes. And they went through her whole process of it and the frustrations that she's dealt with. And she still has not won a championship since having the child. I wondered, because you were a, a hyper-competitive athlete, um, getting back into CrossFit, was it the same thing that she kind of went through where it was just like, man, I don't have the energy, I don't, I don't have the quickness. What was it like for you getting back into it? Uh, well, before I got pregnant, I broke my foot. So that was a pretty devastating. I had already started to mourn the, process, the, mourn the loss of my athletic career mm-hmm. before I got pregnant. But pregnancy kind of sealed the deal for me. And I'm not saying that I won't ever compete again, but I don't want to compete at regionals or the games. I'd like to probably compete in weightlifting. But I'm like the dedication that that takes. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it was, what, Serena's first kid? Yes. You just, you just have this, especially as an, a professional athlete and somebody that is just so determined and disciplined and, and just have that structure and support that you just dive in. You're like, I got this. And you're like, oh, six months, no problem. I got it in four months. Or, and so you have this really unrealistic expectation that your body is going to perform for you the same way it has by what you demand of it. Not necessarily physical performance, but what you demand of your body uh, in a way that has, it always has been. And when it doesn't, because it's nothing that you did or didn't do, uh, when it doesn't perform, it's because your body is just like, no, bitch, we're not doing that. Like, right. You're, I mean, they pulled all my organs out, and then they put me back in, and I'm thinking that I can go six weeks later and start air squatting and pull-ups and, and just, like, some basic fundamentals. I, I really think that some of this timeline should be evaluated, especially for cesarean, uh, because it, it just puts this crazy pressure on women to bounce back. I'm like, I'm not bouncing shit right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm crawling to try and get some sort of um, – some sort of comfort about where my body is and how fucked up it is right now. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm working on a, a, like a amateur comedian skit about it. I mean, but the things that happened to my body, I'm terrified to tell anybody here because like, you're just not going to have kids. You're not going to no, have kids. No, f- fire away. <laughs> like give some examples because it's, <laughs> it's a serious thing. And again, I, after watching the Serena Williams doc, it gave me perspective of like, Oh fuck! I never thought about this. I never thought about that because she had a C-section as well. Yeah, and she talked about because it's your muscles get cut, right? You're like they cut through. It's a major surgery. So what what's a good analogy is that you like having giving birth and even just birth. So then you have an extra trauma on your body uh, for cesarean is like going into an, a major car accident. You're and then you are sent home three days later where. You're expected to take care of yourself, 
which you barely survived that car accident, and then you got to take care of this other person that needs you 100% of the time that will not survive without you. And you're like, and they just let you leave? Yeah. They just let you go home? <laughs> there's no there's no certification Well, that's needed, why they're making no the training. robots, I think. They're like, have a good time. And they let you drive home. I wasn't allowed to drive because of the cesarean. Uh, but, I mean, it's just unreal. I mean... There's, you know, there's the the comedian, sure, the Wong comedian, right? And, yeah. Um, she talks Allie about Wong. Ali Wong. She talks yeah. about her friend, quote unquote, her friend, who's she went to her house and the vagina was like hanging out, right? She was like, like <laughs> she is that a true like thing? Like a pearled out to vagina. It is yeah. a true thing. I looked at I looked at myself. I'm totally gonna. You guys are never gonna see me as a sex symbol again. Don't care. No, <laughs> have you seen our audience? Fuck, I they don't know. give a shit about life. They don't care about anything. They're like, tell a story. <laughs> tell that'll actually turn me on even more. Yeah, to fill out. Come Man, on, I got a lot of weird I fetishes now. Fire away <laughs> with that vag story because I need it oh now. Oh my god. So you come home and I'm like just as big as I was when I went in the hospital, and I looked into the mirror and I was like, holy god! It was like I had elephantitis on my vagina. Like the thing had just swollen so much that it looked like these hanging balls, and I was like. I am never having sex again. <laughs> as soon as this I, interview like, this is, is over. The last, like, that was the last time that there was going to be any action down south. And I'm just thinking <laughs> about my, I'm like, th- like my, all of my insides were like, peace, bitch, we're going south. And that wasn't the only thing that started to fall out. Everything just falls out. And you're terrified. What else, what else goes after that? Lungs, kidneys, everything. So they talk about, women talk about hemorrhoids. Yeah. Not within the first few, like, not within the first two weeks. You don't have hemorrhoids within the first two weeks. Your butthole falls out. Whoa, 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 whoa. The moms are going, yeah, Christmas, dang it. You yeah, there's them. a lot of women <laughs> shaking their head right now. Uh, my and wife is here, and I don't remember her butthole falling out, nor did you tell me. Uh, <laughs> she didn't tell you. Explain that for the audience. <laughs> so all the guys are like, what did I come to? Oh, my God. <laughs> Get this unknown bitch out of here. As soon as this is over, I'm getting on Google and I'm going to start looking up pictures. I bet I, all of you guys. There was, I was talking point. to a guy earlier about his vasectomy. And he just I, waved to you. Yeah, he I, just I, gave I, you a <laughs> wave back. That's my VSEC. That's my fucking VSEC. It's me. How are you? Oh, you were number four? <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? You've had four VSECs? No. Man. Yeah. Well, he, he, you were the post conversation that should have been post operation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get the operation. He had the consult, but not the operation. No, I get it. I hear you on that one. <laughs> That's why we do our V sex at home, anyways. Home kit. Yeah. We get a home kit V sex. We do it ourselves. Is it like the penis tourniquet? Yeah, uh, it's a, a soldering like that, iron. Yeah. It's right. a soldering iron. Yeah. A lot of soldering goes <laughs> down. Uh, go ahead. I go ahead and weld that hole up. You know, uh, when it bursts, you nope. re-weld it up. That's not how that works. No, no, I'm not a scientist. Never claimed to be. Also, never played one on television. Uh, so about that butthole falling out. <laughs> um, was that okay, a prolapsed so anus? Is true that true? Sta- true story. Mm-hmm. I was I had a failed labor. Right, he wasn't going to come out, and he was like, I need to go out through the abdomen. So they cut me open. I go home. I have to sleep on my couch. For a month, and I can't sit up by myself. It was just a nightmare. And I'm thinking, this is the worst of it. And then I walk into the bathroom, and I see my vagina is just like, hey. Out, yeah. And he didn't come through my vagina. So I was like, well, that's weird. But it was just all the swelling going south. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Gravity. (laughs) Gravity. And my sister had warned me. Some women will tell you some of these horror stories. Most women won't. They'll just say, it was such a beautiful experience. And I'm like, those bitch lie. (laughs) They all lie. And you you get to understand the why later. So I didn't, I wasn't really in the why yet. So the first poo that I had. Yeah. Right? I'm going to be a little. First time you dumped out. Yeah, you're on drink of bros. Yeah, you're on drink of bros. You can say whatever. This is a whole new level and I love it. Uh, The first poo I had. I was ex- it was like lightning shooting through my abdomen. I grabbed my my like I gra- both arms. I grabbed yeah. the um the counter next to me in the wall, and I thought I was going to sh- like like Wayne's World swing into the air because it was so painful. And it wasn't like painful like constipated painful. It was just something. There was an electronic uh, electric wave running like just electrocuting my abdomen. Sure. Wow. And I, I don't know I don't know how to explain it it's other nerves. than like it With was just like yeah it felt like yeah. that yeah yeah and so finally it just it happens and I'm like thank God the first one's done like after this they have to be better yeah right I finish up and I'm like man something feels weird 
did I just pop a, like, did I just get hemorrhoids? I go, oh my God, I How, can't believe I'm in this story. What, no. what are the chances? Dan, let her go. Let what her go, Dan. That we let have her, her go. Her she's talking about her prolapse butthole. I, this ah, is, not this where, is the greatest show of all time. So what happens? So I'm like, man, it just feels a little strange. I'm not sure what's happening here. I can't even look at you guys while I tell this story. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. This is the first you. time I've, I've said it publicly. And I, and I go to the mirror. And I turn around and like Ace Ventura, yes. I, I bend over and I look because I'm like, look, I don't know you what's gotta going check on. It my out, yeah. You, you got to check it out. Yeah. Got to yeah. get full in it. Yeah. I and give myself a prostate exam two or three times a day. And it was. Uh, <laughs> toys don't count. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah. Well, there's a camera on the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So just so that's one. Just one time a day. <laughs> yeah. On. Okay. So when Fucking you're looking at it, what, so, what I is mean, it? it? It was not a hemorrhoid. It was a slight prolapse. And I was like, I, I freaked out. I called my sister and I was like, Cole. My asshole just fell out. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, it does that sometimes. I was like, you, what? Like, you could have told me that before, bitch. What's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Warn somebody about that, please. I mean, she warned. She's like, well, she had a vaginal birth. She's like, that first poo was the, the scariest because she thought that all of her insides were going to come out. Well, because I didn't vaginally birth, all of my backside just came out. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> so half of it did. <laughs> I see the faces. They're like, never, ever. Why would you tell this Christmas? Why? Yeah. So I want you to go to Christmas Abbott's Instagram and look at her in a bathing <laughs> suit, just on a beach after this, and then see if you have the same feelings that you had uh, about her Instagram before. <laughs> but picture this story inside your mind. Try now. not to comment hashtag prolapse on every one of her pictures. Because <laughs> our, our people oh are kind of crazy. She has like a million followers, and it's everything is prolapse, <laughs> prolapse, prolapse. Prolapse. Oh, prolapse <laughs> is even great. That's, that's actually, I like that. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Trademark. That's, that's three. Trademark. <laughs> yep. Three today. Christmas is lawyer on line one. Trademark. <laughs> prolapse. Go. Two years. Um, so how long does that last? Yeah, no. I get what he's really asking is how what's your butthole look like now? I mean, like really, within an hour it was normal. It was just like, hey, that was it, that was mm. traumatic for me too, Christmas. And um, is this in any of the baby books? Did they? I talk? didn't read any of them. Oh, they were like, yeah. you might get hemorrhoids if you push really hard during your labor. It, I mean, they like dance around it. Yeah. That's why I want to bring light to this subject, not actually light to my butthole. Yeah. But the subject and um and just. I, it's not, I'm not trying to, to discourage anybody. No, I not just, at all. No, I you mean, should I know. thought I was I thought that there was something really wrong with me between you know that that crazy swell mm -hmm. and then this this crazy painful poo mm -hmm. and then I actually got bigger after um, the you know after I got home from the hospital and I was in the hospital for a whole week for Shit. recovery and so like I just I just want women to be more educated and empowered because I mean it's crazy and then if you're not expecting it. You're calling the doctor or you're just kind of like you're you're Googling things and then you're like, oh, I have anal cancer. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you probably don't know what's happening to yeah. your, your body at that it's point. It's a lot. You know, like you're you're figure, like you you gave birth to a human. But now you actually I like for people to know that I became a mother that day. Like so I would like I birthed the whole new me. Yeah. And you're just it's it's crazy, especially as a single mom being there all by myself. That was that was intense. Yeah. And then I'm like, my vagina is never going to be the same. <laughs> you think it's back in shape now? It's yeah. All right, that's just for the fans at home, obviously. <laughs> Christmas's vagina's back in shape. Um, are you dating anybody right now? Oh that's a no, yes. that was a question I was not supposed to ask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't give you a list, huh? Um, I'm seeing somebody. There we go. Yeah. Good, good. Because everybody at home, I think roots for you. You're one of those people that is so likable online, and in real life, you're the same. Like, there's no difference, but usually there is, right? You Thanks. meet somebody and you're just like, all right, cool. You might be a fan of them on Instagram or on social media, and then you meet them in real life, you're like, oh, fuck, that person sucks. You're actually as happy and positive as you are online, which is amazing. Because the first time I met you was, I think, four years ago at that Shot event. Show. Shot Show. We did a, we hosted something. I you, got to ride in a tank. Yeah, with uh, Jared and uh, Rudy Reyes. <laughs> Who, I was just talking about oh Rudy. Boy. Oh Rudy, boy. Rudy, I love him so We much. love him a lot. He came on the show <laughs> about six months ago. Yeah, it was in March. Craziest fucking episode you will ever hear in your entire life. It was, I mean, it was great. Oh, I, yeah. I can't wait to have him back. Yeah. But that was the first time I met you. And they were like, uh, and I was like, oh, what does Christmas do? Because I, I didn't know. Because we were all thrown together at kind of the last second for that thing. 
And um, they were like, oh, you got to follow her in line. She's got all this, she's super positive and, and uplifting and she's in CrossFit and everything. And I was like, awesome. So then after that gig, I started following you. And then when we did the interview, I was like, oh my God, she really is that person. <laughs> um, so I think it's refreshing to hear somebody like you tell this story versus like, it was just some bitch who came on. It was just like, yeah, childbirth sucks. My life sucks. Like um, when it's you telling this, I think it has a lot more meaning to people. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I had a great time. Like we, me and my sister, we had a playlist. We were dancing. I would do like belly tricks all the time. You know how you guys do dick tricks? Mm. Pregnant no, women I, do dude, belly tricks? Dude, one of the best in the business. Yes. I don't think dudes just hang out and flop their dicks around. That is absolutely untrue. That is untrue, Dan. I do it a lot. That is untrue, and I've seen it, and I've witnessed it on multiple occasions. No, dudes do dick tricks, but not around other dudes, typically, in my experience. That is the only time that I've seen dick tricks. Exactly. Jared Taylor, (laughs) actually, I made him film my ball sack in slow motion on an iPhone, and uh, Matt and I, we were doing a series of videos back and forth to see who could gross each other out or push each other the the furthest. I should have sent a ball hole video. uh, Yeah, if you do, you would have won. Well, actually, I don't know that that's true. The yeah. video that I won was so. Matt's video won. To this day, I am still not allowed to talk about it publicly. Nobody knows what went on in this video. But I'll say he won. But I had Jared film my ball sack in slow motion for probably a good 30, 35 minutes. Uh, and we were just trying to get the right angle because it was in a hotel room. And we were f- flinging oh, so it around. So that wasn't nonstop. No, no, no. It wasn't nonstop. I'm not that good. Um, but I turned the heat up in the room so at least I had some heat on it. Uh, you don't you don't want to do that in a cold room, and that's just a tip for all you guys out so, there. So balmy balls. Yes, yes, balmy balls is the way to go. You got to <laughs> crank up that heat to probably about 82 is the right temperature to really get those things going with the growth that you need for a video. Um, and I didn't win. I didn't so win that video. So what was the slow motion action? Uh, we scored it to uh, uh, the song actually slow motion by Juvenile. Uh, <laughs> I like it like that. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slow motion for me. Slow motion for me. And it was my two balls swinging around as a helicopter over and over again. Oh, yeah. I've seen the helicopter. I thought that would have won that did not win the contest. Do you think that it was because it was lacking creativity because you did the helicopter and you didn't create your own move? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we were on. We were in a hotel. We were filming Range 15 at the time. Yeah. So we were on a, a hotel. I was on the edge of the bed, and we had a... Oh, this is a terrible story. We had a... <laughs> I, cra- I talked about my pregnancy prolapse. All you right. can go yeah. for this. We'll fire okay. away. I made Jared put on a Christian televangelist channel in the background. Jared so Farwell? <laughs> the 700 Club? I'm not sure who it was. I'm I not, think so. I'm not super into it. But okay. what I will say is this. People were getting healed in the background. So I was on the edge of the hotel Probably bed. Probably Benny Hinn. And- yeah, yeah. I, I was on the edge of the hotel bed. You could see my balls going in a circle like this. And people were getting healed in the background on the TV. <laughs> and I, th- I thought, too, slow motion for me. Slow motion for me. So you could see the people going back. And then my balls just swinging over and over again. Again, thought I would have won the video contest. Did not, Matt Best, did it, not. It makes me very curious about what Matt submitted. Everyone's very curious. Everyone about is. Uh, I think I probably pref- I, I prefer <laughs> not <don't>. to know. <laughs> nope. Maybe, nope. maybe I'll tell you off air. It was one of those things where I will say this. With our group of friends, we are close enough that no one outside of the five of us has ever seen this video. I've never showed one person. I, I think we all deleted it, actually. That was part of the deal of like, hey, we're going to delete these, so. That's solidarity. Yeah. Because if you want to do it and you, you know, you have best friends, like Mm -hmm. there is a line where you're like, hey, man, I'll push it. But it's going to be for the five of us and no one else. So I really apologize. Although I just told my Jerry Falwell story. So there you have it. But that's yours to tell. It is. It is. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, So I get to tell it. I get to tell it. So the guy you're dating, is he here? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow, that was a really good circle back. I thought I dodged it. <laughs> well, there was there was two people who asked if you were dating before we came on the show. Jared Taylor called us and said... <laughs> I missed a call from him the other day. Surprise. Well, because he's single. Uh, I had a feeling that's why he got that call. So he goes, while you're there, ask Christmas Abbott if she's single. <laughs> no. No. Nope. Okay, no. good. Uh, the other one was, was Dan Holloway, and he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> Probably going to get a little red right now, but uh, he was the other one. Yeah. you got to go harder than that to get me red. <laughs> I, think, I think you're a little red. No. Uh, yeah. You're turning a shade. He's a little no, flush. This is my face. Give me some love, Dan. Just say you you got another extra layer of red. No, I just don't get embarrassed. It's not about you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're saying that I shouldn't have told that prolapse story. No, the prolapse story is great. No, that helps me, <laughs> that actually. Helps. Yeah. I'm, I'm super okay. into that shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
if there's one person on this earth that you couldn't grow, it's Dan. He'd be like, great. I would have been there with it. a flashlight. I would have helped you. <laughs> I it's a medical procedure. I don't get gross stuff I do that. believe that you would have been like, I know how to take care of this. Oh, yeah. 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 I, like, not Dan miss a beat. is one of those guys, and so is Rocco, by the way, in real life, where it's like, hey, man, yeah. if something medically goes wrong, yeah, yeah. he'll be like, all right, great. Let's break this down, Yeah. and let's get you through this, and you're going to be fine, no yeah. matter how disgusting it is. So I think you're good in that regards. Yeah. Um, are you back to CrossFit full time? No, I've been doing a lot of my own programming and uh, for my app that I've been working on. And it's just been fun to kind of do something a little different. I actually literally uh, this week sold my gym. No shit. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Look at that. Um, I started the boot camp uh, 10 years ago, opened Invoke nine years ago. And it's just it was really good for me to start. You know, I, I've been really kind of big on, I do a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to focus more time um, with Loyal and then also on the things that I really enjoy doing the most that don't um, restrain me. And so I sold it. Uh, I love it. And I, I'm still going to go and work out occasionally yeah. and be part of the community. But I don't, I don't need to have that, that um, attachment to it anymore. It's done exactly what I wanted it to do, and now it's somebody else's um, beautiful baby. That's awesome. Do you miss it at all? Uh, I signed Thursday. No, I don't miss it because it's there. I mean, I I built it for the last nine years, and it's awesome. So, no, I don't miss it. If I missed it, then I would have done something. I mean, you can miss something, but I'm still part of the community. Sure. So, no, I, I, always, I don't. I always, the reason I ask is everybody who has their own business, right, and you're used to doing something every single day, mm -hmm. and then you stop doing it. Uh, that's when a lot of people are like, oh, shit, man. I didn't realize how much I missed the struggle or I missed getting into that. Or, uh, but that's, that's kind of, you're good to go on that. You know, I mean, what I would miss if, if I would be the community, the workouts with everybody, seeing people, um, you know, change their lives and what I call that aha moment, that magical moment mm -hmm. um, where they were convinced that they couldn't do something and then suddenly they did it and they're like, holy cow, that was unbelievable. That's what I would miss, but I still get that in my life. So I still get to be part of class as an athlete, which is awesome. I relinquish all of that responsibility to somebody else. And then, two, I still get to work with my programs. And I, I'm excited to have more time to do that because I can make it better. So I was doing a whole bunch of stuff fairly well. Right. I'm ready to do a few things really great. Yeah. And, and I don't miss it in the sense that, like, running operations day to day because I still have that type of work in my life. And I actually get to – because, like, I was so segmented with things. I was never fully in, and I would have to sh cut myself short as soon as I got creative and was able to find my stride. Mm -hmm. And then – and then I would have to go um, teach class or go make sure that the schedule was out. And, and it just – it really broke up my day a lot. So Anything now that I'm drives really you away from your core competency, it, it, there's a diminishing return on that shit. Yeah. Like, we, we deal with it all the time. Having yeah. Having to do admin shit and paperwork and fucking invoicing and all that nonsense takes us away from what we're actually good at doing. So it's a struggle over time to fucking fill those gaps like what you're doing now. It's right. like it's like getting so flustered you forget to hit record on a thing, you know, for a <laughs> podcast. And you're like, man, I wish there was somebody else doing everything. Fifteen minutes later. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's the button. Yeah, there, there it is. There hey, it it's is. recording. Just to let you yeah. know. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> I appreciate it. What's the app going to be like? Because um, I'm always curious to this process. We've been pitched to have an app all the time. Mm -hmm. Is it as for hard what? as everybody says for drinking bros? So we had. Uh, I mean, like, what would the app be? Well, well, here's the thing. So we've had some controversial guests on uh, the last few weeks. Oh, yeah. Alex Jones. Hey, that's crazy. Alex Jones, uh, who got banned from every single place the on the Info planet. Wars guy that's Info Wars guy. Info Always talking about frogs getting turned gay by fluoride water and shit like that. Listen, I've been in a hole for about two years, so yeah, you can well, update been, me. He's on been something. banned from the internet for about. He's that been long. banned from everywhere, and banned then uh, Milo. Oh, yeah. Milo was on uh -huh. uh, two days ago. Milo Yiannopoulos. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they were the ones who he got banned from a lot of places too, and they were the ones who said, "Hey, man, you've got to get an app going. Uh, that way, in case you get banned, you know, at least people can go oh, one place for all your things. Yeah. Get your website going. Make sure everything is up and running on that. And when you hear it of like, oh shit, I'm going to create my own app, it sounds just so massive that you can't wrap your head around. Is, is the process that hard? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You can do it from scratch. You can have a white label template. You can um, partner with a company that already has an existing app that will like host you. So depending on which way you want to go, you can really, and it's the same thing as like writing a book. You can 
sign with a publisher. You can self-publish or you can, you know, th via Amazon or something like that. Yeah. Or you can, um, you know, sell some on the back of your truck, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. So it really depends on your end goal and what kind of red tape you want around that. Gotcha. So what, it, what's yours going to be like? Is it workout pr plans? Like yeah. individualized for people? Uh, is it kind of like Peloton where it's just like, hey, they're going to be able to physically watch you do workouts? Yeah, that's it. Is it really? So that's right awesome. Now, I've had an app for about four years that are splices of movements, mm -hmm. meaning that like you see me do an air squat, you see me do a burpee, you see me do this, and then the, the workout goes um, comes up, but uh -huh. you don't see me, like it's not the whole workout. Sure. So it's just splice. Okay, gotcha. Um, where I'm getting ready to film from start to finish the whole workout. Like you get to come sweat with me and there's going to be a whole bunch of different tiers of levels. And it's uh, hosted on, um, I want to say, I keep saying Venmo, but it's Vimeo. Vimeo. Oh, Vimeo. Yeah. Vimeo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, they, so they host I'll, the app? Yeah. So I'll have my own channel on Vimeo and it'll be app friendly where you can do a whole workout with me or cook with me or what I'm, I'm trying to start a little Christmas unwrapped show. Uh-huh. So that's not um, like strip in. Hey. hey. You know how much money you make <laughs> off that Christmas? Jesus Christ. You'd be, you'd be yeah, re real rich real quick <laughs> on that one. Um, I would also be banned, so it would be yeah. cool out of my own app. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, you know, it has a whole bunch of things that I can um, do and just be more creative without struggling with the tech of it. And it's just all video based, which, you know, as a, as a society, we're so visually stimulated anyway. Yeah. That uh, it's really nice. And there's, it gets complicated, but it's, it's very simply presented. And I'm really excited about it. No, that's awesome because it, it, this is one of those things too. We're, we're, we're us. We're videotaping every episode now. You guys should do that for sure. Yeah, and we, we have been for the last year, so we've been making a huge push in a video on uh, YouTube and things like that. So I'll connect you with um, Vimeo too because there's ways. There's like a whole bunch of little um, like you can attach certain videos mm -hmm. to. There's there's categories. There's um, playlists to, to the app itself. Yeah. Oh, right on. On the back side of it. Yeah, so, yeah. for example, you could actually, you know, like YouTube suggests the next video for you. Yeah. You can do that and you have complete control about what comes up next. It's on, a user journey, the, basically. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, like, if you wanted to be like outlaws of drinking bros, then you can attach, you can um, link all the ones that have been exiled from any other space. Mm -hmm. So, they can just watch that one after another mm -hmm. without having to search and find it. So there's, it's a, some pretty cool stuff. So I can do like a warm up, connect it to a certain workout and then connect it to a certain um, cool down and then connect it to a certain smoothie, even though they're all in different categories and have been recorded separately. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a whole new world out there. Technology, Dan. <laughs> Goddamn technology. Uh, let's go through the, your uh, top songs to work out to. Um, if you if you had one gun to head slow motion with the balls in the back. Well, that you can't do that by juvenile. That's already taken I'll by me. I'll be able to lift so many. Gun things. to head. If somebody said, "Hey, man, I want you to do your hardest workout right now," what is the what is the first song you put on? I don't know. We've got it one right. I mean, I guess I I kind of I'm one of those. In order to, uh, you know, be that crazy athletic champion with like you know champion of fitness yeah exercise um sometimes i i get in my own he head and i don't use any music no shit you're one, you're one of the only people i think that doesn't work out or the to music. music is kind of like a little bit of a foreplay it doesn't really matter gotcha 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 yeah so for me it does and with the new apple uh library or what apple music whatever the fuck you want to call it they have workout playlists in there Yes, yes. And, and that's why I asked where I'm like, oh, shit. All right, cool. But it'll be from like a celebrity sometimes or uh, uh, a curator who does it. And the number one song on the, the one that I'm listening to now is, is Lose Yourself by Eminem still to this day where oh you're just God. like. That was the first regionals that I went to where uh, like they played that during this one workout, this last workout of the day. And I had to do it an 85 pound snatch and that was my one rep max and I had to do it like eight times and my what I call my baby monster came out and I'm just like Rah! and I did eight singles and it was awesome because I crushed to it. lose yourself yeah 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 and that you had that 85 pound snatch after birth totally kidding <laughs> totally kidding it's a callback joke is what we call that in the biz oh. um there was a lot of Eminem in there so it, it was a lot of 50 cent on there on this playlist yeah I, I went through it a whole day because I was like all right cool do you listen to the lyrics while you're working out sometimes because I think I know them so well that it's like I, I'm one of those people who 
I, I don't enjoy working out like everybody else does in the world. I do it probably five or six days a week, but I need music to get through it. Mm -hmm. And some of the lyrics, yes, actually get you, me personally, yeah. through the workouts where I'm like, all right, I, I definitely need that in my head. Or some crazy form of like techno where it's just like, yeah, that, I, don't that hear high it. I don't hear the words at all. I don't you don't hear the words? No, I just, that's why I listen to metal when I work out. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's more about the guitar and, and shit like that. Like, I just hear the sounds. I don't hear them. I just, the, I the mean, words. like, if it's a really well known song and mm -hmm. I'm really into it, it's too distracting. Like, I'll, I'll shift lanes and then I'll just ah, kind of like start gotcha, gotcha, bopping gotcha. around where I'm supposed to be lifting or doing something different. And I'm just like, hey. Yeah. So if you see her in the gym <laughs> be bopping around, as she's so eloquently stated, <laughs> Tell her to turn the fucking music off. Well, I also I also dance during rest periods. Like if I'm resting, I'm just like I mean I'm having a good time. Like mm -hmm. working out is my party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I call it adult recess. It's a ch I, so for me it's it's more or less a chore because like I enjoy working and I like I would rather be at work. Um, so for me, working out is is one of those things of like all right, I just want to get this over for an hour and then go to work and do the shit that I like to do. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's just kind of just getting through it. But there is some gay songs that I do work out to. Gay songs? Yeah. Like when we came in, like Ka Katy Perry's. Men? Well, close. When we came in, Katy Perry's Firework was playing. I'm not going to say at one point that was on a playlist, but it might have been on a playlist where I was just like. Does that motivate you to hear that you're a firework? No. There's just <laughs> something about the, like when it turns up, like the last one. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. It's 215. I'm, I'm benching 215. Oh, you're not on the elliptical? No, I'm not on the elliptical. <laughs> I'm not on the elliptical. I thought that was when you get in it. No. I, that's one thing I don't do. I'll go treadmill, right? Okay. I won't do stairs. And Why? I, I won't do elliptical. The, oh, this is going to sound terrible. Man, stairs will rock your world. But the women are always on the stairs. So then I feel like the dude <laughs> next to them who's just walking up the stairs next to him, I feel like a rapist following somebody back to their apartment. Because you're still walking up stairs like I'm following somebody. <laughs> that's good practice. That's a weird... <laughs> thing to say it is but they're, they all the women take the the stair stepping machines and i'm just like uh, i don't want to walk next to you and feel like you're pressured or i'm following i feel like i'm following them yeah yeah, yeah. that's they would all run circles around you on that Pro oh probably i know my mom is uh 63 <laughs> right yeah she destroys all of those machines to like an nth level and i'm like i, I probably couldn't get through half that workout mm -mm. yeah it's intense. People always make fun of these like no weighted movements, uh, you know, that that like just don't require anything other than your body. And they're like, oh, that's that that's that Instagram model workout. And I'm like, come with me. Come with me. And it whoops you. Oh, it, it crushes you. So, uh, Matt, like, I've seen it make grown men cry. And they're like, I can't. I'm like, you're a CrossFitter, bitch. Get up. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and Matt. So Matt's got a home gym in his house. Uh, Matt Best. He does. Uh, they're rubber bands but yeah. they go around your legs oh yeah the, and it, the and he goes, resistant hey, man. bands yeah yeah the resistant <laughs> bands he goes you do, you do these resistance bands like oh no my mom does those all the time and he goes uh i was like i'm surprised that you do and he goes i'd tell you what bro let's find out how how tough you are he's like it's cool that you can bench 300 pounds but can you go side to side with these resistance bands all the way down and all the way back your glutes lit tell up. me how you feel dude i was on fire down <laughs> below and i was like holy shit man I think I called my mom right afterwards, and I was like, I am really sorry about that. What you're doing is amazing, and she, I'm a fucking she, loser. She didn't even know he'd been talking all that shit. He called her anyways and apologized for all the shit he'd been talking about. I did, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was wow. like, yeah, and sorry it, about it. And it doesn't just, like, it doesn't just lock you up. It, it lights you. It, it's like a fireball from the inside of the glute out. Mm -hmm. It just it doesn't take any mercy. So what I asked when I got back, because um, it was in Texas, and I, I got back, and there was a personal trainer at the gym, and I said, hey, man, if you could just do resistance bands forever for all of this stuff, he goes, I'll stop you right there. It's way better than weights. And he goes, so you will better. live forever. You'll be flexible. Uh, you'll be healthier and all this other shit. And I was like, I don't go to the kind of gym where you have that type of space to do that. But mm -hmm. he's, they swore by it. Um, you being the you fitness don't need expert. Any space. You need as much as you have right here. But you being the fitness expert, right? Mm -hmm. Is resistance bands the, the jam? Like, is that the... Is that the way to, to, they really, to the ultimate? They really are. And they, they, are, they are really, really great for anybody that doesn't have a garage or gym membership. And you can do them in your living room. You don't need any space. But also, I do advocate lifting weights, like weighted movements, even if they're not crazy or super heavy, uh, increases 
uh, your muscle muscle density and also your bone density. So especially for women getting older, like you always think about like, oh, this person fell, you know, fell down where well, they were super fit and they broke their hip is because they didn't do weighted weighted lifts. Right. Like that weighted lifts actually um, makes your bones really, really dense. So it's, it's a, I don't know, it's, it's like my little thing. But otherwise, if you have to pick one, you can definitely do the bands easy and it's going to rock your world. Yeah, I, dude, I, I've never felt more on fire than that. And then Ru when Rudy Reyes is on, his, he lives and dies by kettlebells. And he's like, I don't care where I am. If I'm or in a, rocks. Or, yeah, he goes, if I'm in a <laughs> hotel room, I'll, I'll do a kettlebell out by the pool. I'll do it in between the beds. Like uh, Tim Kennedy is also like that where he's like, there is no excuse or no place that you cannot work out in. You, and that's enough for that's enough of a weighted ob object to. I mean, you can pick up anything. People. I mean, my son, he's he's like twenty six pounds now. That's a decent kettlebell. Yeah, it he's is. He's a huge baby. Yeah. Do you put something on his head and lift him like a kettlebell ever? <laughs> no, but he has got a big old noggin. Yeah, I mean, you could <laughs> you know you could put a little something down there and just pull him up and down all the time. I mean, I do grab him by his little butt from his pants and carry him like a little suitcase sometimes. <laughs> 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 he, oh, he's laughing now. He, I, I think he knows. I think he knows what's going on. He's a cuddle bug. He's like, and guy, guys, watch out because he'll steal your girl. He'll look at you. Yeah. Look at your girl and give her a what's up. <laughs> Did, let me ask you. Did he help you get the new boyfriend? Because look, he's a good-looking kid. He's got I his know, own Instagram, by the I way. Know. You, you went DJ Khaled with your child. <laughs> yes. My son Assad. You have an Instagram <laughs> for your child, right? I do. He's, I mean, he's already a baby model. He did some modeling for the nanny agency that I used when, um, uh, a year ago when he was born and I, I needed some help. So, I mean, he's just, he's so, he's so like into the camera, the camera comes up and he's like, got it. Okay. Yeah. You got it. And he just like is in it and it's, it's really cute. He also is kind of, I'm going to be a mom for a minute. Sure. I'm, I'm changing my pants. And uh, so he just turned a year, and on his birthday, I took him to the Marbles Museum downtown, and it's all this big kid stuff, and he's, he hadn't started walking yet, and I stood him up, and he stood there and took five steps, not one of those one, two, fall on your face, five strides, and then he sat down, and I was like, you are my son. <laughs> you are my son. Like, so, like the pressure was on today. You knew that it was your birthday, yeah. your actual birthday. And he's like, I'm going to walk because I am going amazing. And I was like, uh-huh. All right now. So on a so, year, on a year to the day he was walking his birthday. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. Not just like at a year on his birthday as like we had some, I had some friends there. We were all celebrating and he was like, let me strut it. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, baby. Let boy. me strut it. Let me show you what the buck's going down. Yeah. We're good. And we're so good. when somebody comes with the camera, I mean, he knows to when to perform. He's, he's a good kid. I like it. That's funny. Uh, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. This is somebody that has inspired you and or helped you. You've done it before. Christmas, you've done it before. I know. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to now? Uh, is this weird to say? My, like, okay, what? No, give me, give me there's the parameters. Weird to say. Yeah, give no, me the parameters. People say their parents a lot. People, people say, say their parents a lot. He said Anne Frank for his. Yeah. Um, you can say anything anybody wants. I'm going to say my lawyer. No shit. I You're gonna <laughs> shout out your lawyer on the show. I love it. Yes, that's the first time that's happened. Oh, uh, I wish that I could. That bitch is awesome. Really? I love her. Yes, yes, yes. Um, are we allowed to talk about what your lawyer did or did not do I, for you? I'm gonna say is that there were two major life-changing events that happened this week, and it was handled with grace and just patience, and you know, just you know, I, I'm sometimes a little bit of a bull. And, um, you know, for them to be able to handle me and everybody, everybody, not just me, but everybody walk away and, with a happy uh, deal mm -hmm. was awesome. So, yeah, shout out to my lawyer. She's awesome. Go. What's her name? Uh, Give her a plug. Is she here? Is she local? <laughs> she is local to, to Raleigh. Uh, Carrie Close. Yeah, that'll help. That'll That's help. a cool yeah. name, too. Carrie Close. Everybody's always, everybody always lawyer. needs a good lawyer. So. I'm going to tell you, my other lawyer, Vincent, he's my business lawyer. He was also a rock star. <laughs> this That's this awesome. Week. Yeah. So this is a big week. Congratulations. Thanks. Are you out of everything? You're out of the woods on everything? I, I'm not sure. I'm going to go say yes. 
<laughs> be positive. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, if you've seen TMZ, Check there's, a, there's the a couple things here and there where it's like, eh, you're out of the woods. You're all good. I have no idea what you're talking Me about. Me neither. I don't either. <laughs> um, no comment. It's no. so hard to remember <laughs> things. Yeah. It is. It's I, yeah. I forget all what, kinds of stuff. The funny yeah. thing is, is that I actually made a joke the next day after TMZ broke, and I was like, so officially yesterday's news, making a joke, because like, when does TMZ run with anything? I know. Never, except for this one. <laughs> so I was like, man, why won't they just let that go? Well, here's the thing. I think when it happens to you, right? Because we watch TMZ. You look at TMZ <laughs> all the time, right? Oh, for sure. And you when it's the, you, the you have to have been jail? like, yo, what the fuck? The Penny Jail newspaper? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who do I know in here? Oh, shit, that's my pick. <laughs> <laughs> I should have did my hair. I didn't think it was going to leak. You <laughs> had a pretty you had a good mug shot though. You had a good mug shot. It was great. It was really really great. Thanks. I don't I think that's one of those things where you never think. You're like, "Ah, eh, I'm not going to leave the house today and get arrested, you know?" Like <laughs> Well, they didn't come get me. No. I no. turned myself in. You did. Oh, you did. Okay, cool. I did. I mean, I flew on a plane to go turn myself in because I didn't want them to come get me or, you know, just I was like, "Oh, the warrant's out." The next day I was on the plane. Oh, got you, got you. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a responsible um, criminal. Yes, yeah, responsible criminal. It would have been awesome if you would have, like, uh, wore an eye patch in there. <laughs> Just an eye patch for your thing, and it's like, yo, dude, what happened that she's wearing an eye patch in her mugshot? But I should have, my sister said this. Okay, so this isn't my doing, but she said you should have wore a shirt that said Tawanda. I'm not going to give you any other information. <laughs> She laughed. <laughs> she, know, she knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows. How many of them hormones are you on, girl? <laughs> <laughs> At the time, all of them. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so great. Christmas <laughs> Abbott, you're one of our favorite people on the planet. Thank you so much for being on Drinking Bros. Uh, will, you, will you come back even though we've, we've maybe talked about some of the most disgusting shit on the planet today? I love it. Uh, well, that one we'll call it Drinking B Bros and Babe. Yeah, drinking bros and brave. Uh, broette. Broette, broette is what we're calling it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I'm a not like a babe. Well, yeah, you guys treat some of your women a little differently than I. I allow my. We treat them like princesses. <laughs> I'm always nice every single time. <laughs> Jesse will attest to that. I am a prince and I treat her like gold. Nope, no smile out of her. Not even. Not, not even. one. Uh, <laughs> one smile <laughs> out of her. She's fighting it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Christmas. Uh, where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, stalking is really easy. Uh, ChristmasAbbott.com at Christmas Abbott. Cool. And the app? The app, you have to sign up for my newsletter because it's not launched yet. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, I know. It's like, uh, uh, bad timing, Christmas. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Everybody, <laughs> it'll, it'll everybody follows you anyway. In January. It, yeah. Uh, if you follow you on Instagram, we'll find it. Yeah, and, and sign up for my notifications because I, I do some funny stuff on there. I'm not just, you know, curls and... Prolapsing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not just Is curls. Is that the name of the app? Curls <laughs> and prolapsing. prolapsing. I don't know. That would be the highest ranked app in the, in the entire iTunes store. Yep. Come for curls the curls, stay prolapsing. for the prolapse. Yeah. It's like one of those moments that you look back and you go, that's where my career changed. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot on this show. Exactly. Actually, so I may have to move to Wilmington and be a permanent co-host with you guys. We're, <laughs> we're down. We're down. We're looking for other podcasts. We're, we open up a media company. So Ooh. think about it, Christmas. I dig it. <laughs> think about it. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Christmas Abbott, I'm Ross Patterson to Instill Distilling Company. Thank you for having us today. This is a fantastic location. If you were in the Clayton, North Carolina area, you've got to stop by here. Built and worked on by drinking bros themselves. Uh, good afternoon and good night, everyone.